I really want to be in the garden gardening because the sun is finally sort of showing itself between black clouds. <laughs> but I have to set up for the yews to come down into this field. So I've got to set out the feed troughs and the bins of food, etc. And they're going to go in this field, which goes all the way around to the woodland over there, which hasn't been fenced in yet, but hopefully will be soon in the next few weeks. So the yews are all going to be going down there, out there rather. And the aquifer is flowing like crazy. Lovely fresh water, dogs love. So you can see this is the aquifer flowing. Oh look, we have a little mini dam. There we go. Anyway, here. So, and there's the woods with lots of snowdrops, wood anemone, bluebells, daffodils. Um, uh, and I could keep going on, I can't think of everything. The cow parsley is coming soon and the bluebells as well. And the willows. I love the spring green of willows. So we're getting there, slowly but surely. And the sun. Here comes the sun. Da -na -na -na. Okay, there's my bad singing for the day. I've just righted this trough. Whoops, and you've come in it thinking there's gonna be food, didn't you? There's no food in it yet, not yet. But I'm feeling really guilty because look, these are all spiders nests. And this was upside down um, over there with that one. Uh, so I'm feeling guilty, but I'm putting this on the uphill end so they won't drown and hopefully they won't mind being exposed to the elements. I'm hoping anyway. Maybe I'll grab a bamboo leaf and cover them up, but I don't think that'll do very much. No, it won't, because the dog has just ruined my little roof. Okay, and the sheep food. I won't put the sheep food there. Oh, there's my gloves, but I can do the video, turn the video on. And look, there's a few here as well. But a few snails, but the most of the baby spiders nests are at this end. So I'm going to leave that uphill. And I wonder if there's any spider eggs or spider nests in this one. But see, this was this way up. So, oh, one. Oh, more. There's more. Look, more spider nests. Okay, I'll put that uphill, even though it's the right side up, so that they'll be weather protected. And, ah, the sun is glorious. Before I put the sheep out into this field with the great oak, I have to fix this gate. The, this is rotten. Look at that completely rotten. So that has pulled all the way through. And the gate people haven't come in ages. Or, sorry, fence people. So I'm going to have to do so it with I'm rope. To tie the rope around that just to swing it shut. And it's really heavy. I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do it on my own and not have to call for help. But uh, we'll see. If I can manage that on my own or not. Whoo! Sunday mornings when the sun's shining. Beautiful weather.
Now, let's hope the gate won't tip over. It's just so that it doesn't fall over when I swing it shut. It's a heavy gate. all on my own. See, my concern was that when I opened it and it broke, it nearly tipped over. So putting that rope there held it upright. So that was like my second person. Anyway, I might leave that rope there for the time being until I get somebody to help me put in a new fence post that isn't so rotten. Look at that, so completely rotten. Because it'll have to have a strainer and everything to hold that fence line up. So, there we go. I might cut the bits of rope off and take the rest of that home so it's not left in the field. Job accomplished, hopefully. There's enough in there. Yeah, I'm going to have to tie this tighter in case a sheep scrapes against it and pushes it over. So I'll do a bit more tying up now. I turned up to oversee what I was doing as I was tying that much tighter. <laughs> hey, kitty, how are you? Yeah, overseeing me. This is a very famous fence post, at least here on the farm. There's a bit of film. I'll see if I can find it of uh, Bodacious sitting on that and the flock of sheep come galloping down here and then come into here and he was overseeing the sheep. He had no fear, Bodacious. Of him it was his apprentice. Okay, I've got to continue taking that across there and tying that up just to secure this gate so that it doesn't fall over. Isn't that right, puppers? Yeah, puppers. All my dogs. Uh, I'm gonna be lazy. I'm not gonna cut a good piece of rope. Hopefully it won't be there too long. And a long bit of rope is always useful. So that's tied up. That is not part of the tie. So there we go. And he's still holding fort over this end. so rotten. Now I've got to walk down and close the gate all the way down at the base of the woodland so that the sheep don't go into the woods that doesn't have a fence. They could escape onto the public road. Not a good plan. Anyway, time for a walk across the field, ladies and gents. Come on, Java. Get away from the road. I don't want Java to become strawberry jam. That would not be a good plan. New, no. come on, let's go for a walk. Yes. Here you can see this is a tree that died. We had to take it down. But whenever we take a tree down along the road, we plant, at the moment we're planting beech trees. And this is a beech tree um, that's planted here. These are a hawthorn and a healthy ash tree. I'll have to plant a beach there at some stage. Oh, look, oven mitt's following us. Hey, kitty, what you doing? Okay. So this is a young beech tree. This has been here for two, three years, I think. So, and look, the horse chestnuts are coming out. Their leaves are emerging. I always love the horse chestnut. Look at that. Beautiful leaves coming out. There is a very healthy ash tree. This is an ash tree stump. They just took this ash tree down. You can see it's completely dead. No life in it. So that had to come down so that it didn't cause fall into the road. And here is the woodland. 
So you can see the track where the fence is going to go is along there. And there's more dead ash. All the dead ash that was along the road we had to take down so that it wouldn't cause uh, storm damage on the road. So I've got to close this gate now. Hopefully it doesn't break. Oh. Oh, come on, gate. There we go. There we go. And then this fence line, I'll walk it to make sure no trees are down up the edge of the woodland over there so that the fence uh, won't be down for sheep to escape. I've got to bolt this, but it takes two hands to do that. Here you can see why I want the sheep to go in there. It is literally a monoculture of ivy climbing up the trees. There's nothing in there. There's no um, bluebells, no wood anemones, no cow parsley, no primulas, nothing except ivy. And ivy only feeds wildlife twice a year. And it's very easy if they're nesting in it for corvids to get their eggs and their nestlings. So de-ivying there with the sheep is going to be fantastic for biodiversity. And that's why we have to manage the land. We don't have enough herbivores, wild herbivores to do it. So we as humans have to manage it for biodiversity. So this is the far end of the field where the great oak is. That's the great oak very healthy ash tree because the sheep graze all the dead leaves so the disease doesn't cycle. Then these are beech trees and it goes into the woodland which is the ivy monoculture which I'm hoping to change. And yeah, you've come as well, haven't you? Is that right, kitty? We're going up the hill. This is a very, very steep hill. You cannot, t tractors, you cannot, on the side of that there, there's sections of it where you can tip a tractor over. Maybe not one of the big, huge modern ones, but um, very steep. Anyway, here's some elder. And another ash tree that's looking very, oh no, it's not an ash tree. I apologize. It's a field maple. Isn't that right, kitty? Up here we have um, gorse, which is great for nesting birds. And in that woodland, there's um, beech, ash, oak, hawthorn, all kinds of things. And that's our woodland over there. So one day we will continue the biodiversity into that woodland. You can see how the Lords and ladies are jacking the pulpits, are trying to make inroads. Look at that. There's a big bit. But otherwise, it's ivy, 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 ivy. And all the way over there is laurel. Another biodiversity killer. Oh, look, there is a tree down, but it doesn't look like much of one. Yeah, the fence is fine. I can come with a chainsaw and chop that out more laurel. It'll be so wonderful when that biodiversity occurs. Here's a path. This is a wildlife path. I'd say that's badgers and foxes and hedgehogs and pheasants and dogs and cats all use that pathway. It's well worn and it's not a human one because it goes under the fence. There's a huge patch of brambles we have here up on the top of the hill just before the woodlands. And then here's our gorse. I love gorse. It's such a beautiful plant. A lot of farmers don't because it takes over their fields. But it's excellent for biodiversity and superb for birds to nest in because the corvids won't go in there. And you can hear the cross birds. You hear that chit, 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 chit. They're very cross. 
and somebody has just flown in there. They are not pleased with us being here with the cat somewhere. Oven mitt is somewhere. So there's probably loads of them nesting in here. So I will move along, move along. For comparison, this is uh, what woodland biodiversity should look like. There's celandine, cow parsley, jack-in-the-pulpits, uh, bluebells, snowdrops, daffodils, all kinds of things are in these woods. And that is from the seed. Okay, I brought in the um, snowdrops and daffodils, but the bluebells and everything were there before. And I cleared that of all the ivy probably over 25 years ago, maybe less, 20, 25 years ago. And that's what biodiversity is. And that feeds a broad selection of insects, which feed birds. And that is what I want to do to the other woodland. There's still ivy in there. So that's the rest of the woodland that I'm gonna be working on over the next number of years to increase the biodiversity from the monoculture of ivy. It's thirsty work following me all the way around the field, isn't it, of it? This is everybody's favorite drinking water. It's from the aquifer. We've had so much rain that it's flowing freely. The sheep love drinking out of this. That fence post is just about dead, but luckily there's a concrete one behind it holding the fence up. <laughs> Thirsty work being a cat following a shepherd around the field and putting up gate posts. Sorry, putting up gates. So, I've been weeding, weeding and weeding and weeding, weeding mostly celandine because it takes over the bed. So it gives a chance for the primulas and the uh, lugwort, those right there. And these primulas, this one was drowning in these. That's the celandine. And now I've made it so that it can't. It's not drowning in celandine. I still have to weed more of them, but I've got to weed around those lovely pink characters. You can see I did weeding last week around here, but there's still a few celandine. So it's all buzzing. And these plum blossoms are full of bumblebees and honeybees and hoverflies and all kinds of pollinators. But I love that the bumblebees are loving the primulas here. There's one over there buzzing around. Don't know where it's gonna land but they're loving the primulas, loads of primulas. 
these are all constantly being divided. So you get a whole host of them. There you can see an overgrowth of celandine. So I've got to weed them out so that the primulas that are under them can breathe. It's lovely weeding around and suddenly finding a primula that's trying to come out like this beautiful one it was completely surrounded. There's another one there. That one there was surrounded as well. Anyway, slowly but surely, 